<clears throat> being a female, you know, you sometimes don't really have things on that control as if you're a guy. I'm not trying to sound like a chauvinist. <laughs> Hi YouTube, welcome back to my channel. It's Michelle Amare, and I'm here with my daddy. In today's video, we will be talking about how to convince your parents or your family to let you travel abroad. So, daddy, do you wanna say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. <laughs> That's it? You're not gonna say nothing else? Oh, you we have, keep it going. No, you have to tell me what you want me no, to do. No, you're supposed to be yourself. I know. Is it a conversation? Yeah, it's a conversation, but the conversation hasn't started yet. Yeah, you got to introduce yourself. Okay, it's okay. That's my dad. All right, so first question. Do you give me permission to travel? Permission to travel? Not exactly at this moment, <laughs> given the pandemic. Okay. That it's uh, going around the whole world. You know, actually, I'm a fan of traveling. I did a, quite a bit of traveling in my younger days. You know, in that I went to school in Norway. You just uh, have to speak up a little bit louder. In that, you do good. In that I went to school in Norway. So I experienced uh, life in the can uh, Scandinavia. And uh, I'm a fan of traveling. I like young people to travel and explore the world. That's the only way they can experience the world. Okay. So with all the travels I've been doing so far, have you ever said, yes, I give you permission. You can go out into the world and explore. No, I won't give you a blanket permission like that. Uh, because of the timing, because of the political situation in the country, uh, or around the world. I grew up in the 80s, you know, and then the world was a better place, a little bit calmer. But what we are seeing now with terrorist activities, 9-11, uh, the pandemic, pandemic or what, the virus situation. So one needs to be a little bit more cautious before you travel. Okay, so you talk about all the different issues that we have currently. Are you saying none of those were existent during the 80s? Uh, the 80s were a little bit safer. What's the meter that you're using to compare safety back then to now? Uh, in the sense that it, the world was a little more sane. Uh, the, the terrorist actions around the world were not as intense and as prevalent as it is now. And uh, the disease situation, that's the one that is very scary. All right, Daddy, I hear you. So my next question is, how do you feel about me traveling as a young black woman? Sometimes I've felt very scary. You know, sometimes uh, when I know where you're going and how you're going, and, you know, I can't tend to be more relaxed. I think one of the areas that we disagree on is just how much those different situations that are happening in the world should take and that I should take into account when I'm deciding to go abroad and travel. Fear is just something I don't want to give into and I personally would rather just live my life and do the things that I want to do and not be crippled by fear. But you seem to be more, a lot more cautious and to say like, well, you shouldn't be doing this at all because of these different risks involved. Whereas I'm like, okay, risks are gonna be there regardless, anytime. That's not a reason why you should stay home and be bubble wrapped and protected in your house so that nothing happens to you. Well, when when you say fear, I don't quite agree with you because there is always that element of the unknown, you know. But the thing is that in this time and age, you know, it is more prevalent now than it used to be in the 80s. And uh, having been somebody who grew up in the 80s or who explored the world in the 80s when the world was a little relatively safer, you know, I can only bet exercise uh, advice you to be very cautious you know and uh, not to let your guards down 
and uh, also to be do more research you know so that you know where you're going and okay. what you're doing daddy you think i just jump on a plane and show up in thailand or show up in wherever i go like you don't think i do any kind of research <laughs> well you probably do but i don't know you know, it, and that's a good point. Because if you don't tell me, I wouldn't know. That's a good point that you bring yeah. up. So what are some things that I can do to help ease your concerns whenever I go abroad? And I will say that I do kind of give you research and tell you about the condition kind of, okay, I don't do that. But okay, yeah. So what are some things that I can do to help calm your fears whenever I decide to go abroad? Uh, is to tell me on time, let me know ahead of time. Because I'd be buying- And, and, oh, and let me know, the uh the precautions you are going to put in place you know uh, because i feel like you only tell me when you've made up your mind <laughs> you know so no matter what i tell you at that <laughs> point you are hell bent you're going you know sometimes you should consider our feelings too you know <laughs> okay but i will say that part of the reason why i just decide where I'm going and what I'm doing and then plan accordingly and then tell my dad like a month before and be like, hey, I'm moving abroad or hey, I'm traveling to such and such country is because I know that if I'm in the process of considering if I want to travel and especially because I'm traveling by myself, that alone can be kind of scary. Like, although I do travel solo a lot, it's not, I don't want to sit here and paint a picture that I'm just the most courageous and confident person in the entire world and I never have moments of fear. I do, but I feel like if I were to involve you in the process of considering and thinking out whether or not I should go on a certain trip, I already know your answer your answer is no stay home and read your book and so that's why I take the initiative to plan the trip book the flight book the, <laughs> the accommodations and just let you know when you need to take me to the airport oh uh, well that's not getting my consent I know. If, you know because you tell me after you bought your ticket you concluded your traveling arrangement you know uh, in in that way, you've not considered my opinion. My opinion, you know, I should. I, I feel like I should be involved from the get go, you know. Uh, if you still have to go, you have to go. But at least you would have listened to my suggestions, and you know, maybe I can give you uh, one or two pointers. I'll be honest. It feels like you go off of what your perception of that country is without any like verified research done beforehand. So it feels like you're almost projecting your fears onto me as opposed to doing your own like solid ground research to say, hey, this is the situation here. These are things you really should take into account. But when you're saying don't go to Thailand because there's been this and that happening and I'm looking at the news and you know, or look, researching the political climate of the country and I mean at least as a tourist I know I can go and come back most probably you know it kind of just makes me reconsider anything you would say because for me I don't want to give in to fear mongering I feel sometimes you might try to instill fear in me to dissuade me from going all together as opposed to providing me with verified facts well uh it may be true but remember, when you wait until you've concluded arrangements to tell me, you know, at that point, you've not given me the benefits of making solid background work, you know. Okay. You know, so all I can tell you when I have a month, you have a month to travel and you come to me, I will say no. Okay. Because I probably don't know much about the country and I wouldn't like you to just, you know, plunge into a situation, into a country that you don't know anything about because I don't know how much research you have done. Okay. Because you didn't get me involved earlier. All right, and that's understandable. So like moving forward, what we can do is like, as I'm in the process of planning a certain trip or making a certain move, consult you in that process and let you know ahead of time so that we can both be doing research and then be able to come together and talk about whether or not this is a smart move or smart trip to make or not. I think that would help. Okay, great. Something.
We achieved something. What advice would you give the parents of other people like me who want to travel? Whether it's solo travel, even study abroad, you weren't too happy about. Even when I interned abroad, you weren't too happy about. So what advice would you give those kind of parents of children who would like to do things like that? First of all, know your child. Uh, solo travel is not what every child can embark on. Know your child and know if they have that inner strength, that wisdom, that intellectual curiosity that will enable them to handle situations effectively. And also make sure they have adequate financial support because that's another important factor. If, for example, if you lose your wallet, if you lose your passport, if you lose your money, what are you gonna do? You know, you call your dad SOS and your dad don't have money to send you. What are you gonna do? You know, so it's all, all these facts you have to consider in your planning, financial planning, financial backup. You trying to say I travel broke? I didn't say that, <laughs> but you never know. All right, my money up, thank you. All right, how do you feel about me making this decision to move abroad at 22? Uh, moving abroad at 22 uh, depends on a lot of factors. Are you moving abroad to get more education? Are you moving abroad to look for a job? Are you moving abroad just for the heck of it? For yeah. the heck of it, and that's a great answer. Okay. For the heck of it, what about your, uh, what about your education? My education is not running away. Institutions are still open. Oh, okay. Are you going to further education abroad or here? Definitely not. That you know, I'm going abroad to teach, and during the time that I'm abroad, since I'm only teaching 16 hours a week with my program, I'm spending the rest of my time pursuing my passions and traveling Europe extensively. I think that's a great use of time. I'm 22. So, how long do you intend to stay? For nine months, and then I'm coming right back to the, well, actually, yeah. okay. Nine, nine months is okay. Yeah. If you have, you know, if you have plans, you know, that will keep you busy for nine months. You know my Not plans. Not nine months gallivanting around oh, in Europe. It's nine months gallivanting. And then I don't support That's it. what it's gonna be. You know. <laughs> It has to be a targeted nine months. Yeah, targeted nine months on myself. Time to explore, time to just travel, time to just be a 22-year-old young woman who's just living her life happily. That's what it is. Well, in this day and age, I don't think it's very wise. Why? Because the world is not as safe as it used to be. Okay. And now, how do you feel about me taking a gap year from, so I graduated college, I graduated college spring of 2019. I graduated a year early, so I kind of had built in time there. And I spent that year traveling some more and doing pageantry. Now I'm taking another year to move abroad. How do you feel about me delaying law school for another year? <clears throat> Being a female, you know, you sometimes don't really have things under control as if you're a guy. I'm not trying to sound like a chauvinist, <laughs> but let's say you go to Europe and you find that Prince Charming and uh, he sweeps you <laughs> under your feet and then uh, you get married. In Europe? In Europe and then you lose the desire to go to law school because you start raising family, you know. So you have to consider that. Okay. Well, we can agree to disagree. <laughs> I already knew we were gonna agree on this video, but um, are there any closing last words that you want to say? Of course. I wish you well in your endeavors, but uh, I wish you will kind of reconsider things and uh, you know, listen and consider the points, my point of view. And uh, if that's what you decide to do, I wish you all the best. Well, um, thank you, Daddy, for taking 
some of your time to be able to be a part of this video. Definitely enjoyed having your perspective and being able to have your take on this issue. I'm hoping that this will be helpful and insightful to some of you guys out there. As you can see, my dad still doesn't approve of my traveling and um, you know, we're on different pages on different things, but I do encourage you guys to just start that dialogue with your parents and with your family members and try to see if you guys can meet each other halfway on this issue. But regardless, I hope you guys stay well. Please check out my other videos, like, subscribe and share, and I will see you guys very soon. Are you gonna say bye? Bye.